We've heard so many times that early detection is the key to heart health. Amy's here with information about a pilot program. Vicki, the statistics are really startling. Every 30 seconds, an American has a heart attack. Every 53 seconds, an American has a stroke. And every hour, 100 people die from vascular disease. So what if you could be screened to find early warning signs to help you reduce your risk and perhaps even change your fate? That's what a local doctor is hoping to do with information about your circulation. Jane. Nashville neurologist Fred Callahan is on a mission. And that's the reason for screening to identify early on when the artery is not very narrow, but when the risk is extremely high so that we might get more Americans in an appropriate program of both medication as well as behavioral change to make our plaques become stable. His target, yeah. this ugly plaque no. that's the source of so much sickness in America. So cap keeps the circulating blood for me. But he believes we're focusing too much on just knowing our cholesterol levels. High levels of cholesterol are not associated with stroke and with 40 percent of all the Americans having a heart attack there this year having a normal cholesterol it's very clear that if every American learns their cholesterol level we probably haven't fixed the problem. If you can learn that you have hardening of the arteries that you have plaque then whatever your cholesterol level is for you it's too high because your blood cholesterol has gotten inside the artery. And that's been the challenge how to find that out in an easy affordable way. The next medical revolution is what we call integrated vascular care and the first step is widespread screening. Because right now, for those people that would like to find if they have vascular trouble, in our country, you can't really get that done. The insurance won't pay for it. The tests are generally quite expensive and you'd have to pay for it out of pocket. This screening ultrasound called AngioScreen is Dr. Callahan's answer, a non-invasive tool to get images of the arteries. No radiation, there's no dye that's injected, and we find out very quickly these are actually the very best measures of if you're at risk for a heart attack or a stroke. These measures are better than your cholesterol or your good cholesterol or your bad cholesterol, right. any of the other measures that we have in medicine. These are better right. than those. Patients are given pictures of their carotid arteries to take to their own physician for follow-up. Good color flow. The goal that early detection leads to early intervention. We think on the medical side that you might be on medications, that you probably should be on medicines, that we can make a difference. We can make that plaque shrink in size. We can make the plaque that might be unstable become stable. We can do this with medication. It turns out that 10 million Americans, basically 25% of all Americans over 65, have blockages in their leg arteries and they have a risk of a heart attack equal to the risk of someone who just had a heart attack and survived it having a second heart attack even if the patient with the leg artery blockage has never had a cardiac symptom. If you go through the screening you should take your information to your own doctor. This is Fred Callahan from uh, Nashville, Tennessee and I'm going to share with you today some of the uh, advances in terms of blood vessel screening and some of the newer concepts in medical care that's represented by angio screen and specifically I want to go through some of the uh, science that was used to to determine what we do the purpose of screening is to identify those of us who haven't been sick yet but we don't know that our blood vessels are not normal and then the notion is if we could identify those Americans and there are millions and millions of Americans uh, that we'd be able to find is that we'd be able to maybe change their behavior and in order to do that we'd have to have a program that would be understandable it have to be some way to communicate and this is very difficult at least in my practice as a neurologist I mean I'll talk but patients might as well think I'm speaking Japanese uh, so you have to be able to communicate with a public that is medically illiterate but doesn't wish to be sick it has to be convenient and certainly come into our offices and fortress hospitals is the very antithesis of convenience. The measures that would be utilized would have to be extraordinarily sensitive. That is, we'd have to have a convenient and understandable way to actually make sure that we were actually measuring what we wish to measure, and that is the not normal blood vessels. It would have to be low cost. If you want to screen literally 100 million Americans, you have to do that at a very good price point because probably the majority of the people we screen will be normal. So that we can't spend thousands of dollars identifying the normal. 
we'd have to have appropriate educational collateral materials, and I think we ought to be able to provide the public a digital record. Patients have come to my office and they've seen other physicians, they've had testing, and typically they bring nothing with them. And uh, identifying those records and chasing them down is something that's very, very difficult to do. So that would be the ideal screening program, and that's precisely the screening program that was developed for AngioScreen. Convenient, cost-effective, a wonderful way to communicate uh, with patients in order for them to understand that they have risk or accelerated risk and to invite them to come into a healthcare system that will hopefully care for them, not just rescue them. Typically a consumer uh, comes into the screening suite or screening area and has to uh, remove their, their socks and shoes. So they have to do this in order to get up on the table. They lie recumbent. They have to be perfectly flat. The head of the patient, the ultrasonographer, is going to study and do both the B mode as well as the color flow image with the uh, carotid and do the Doppler interrogations and obtain that data. And at the same time, the technician is actually performing, uh, cuffing the patient with all uh, four limbs because we have to get four blood pressures. Then affixing the EKG, we use a very particular way that we do this in order to trigger the interpretation microprocessor where lead V1 or V5 is actually put over the clavicle. And then we do a, a Doppler interrogation of the blood pressure in the legs. And often we don't use Doppler over the radial artery and the wrist. We just simply do the usual uh, stethoscope check of blood pressure. And so in, in very short order, literally in eight or 10 minutes, we then obtained all of the data that then gets entered into the uh, single sheet that the computer program produces for each subject that comes through screening. And then a period of time is spent with the subjects as they leave and exit the screening area so that they can have an understanding of the results, how the abnormal results are flagged based upon accepted guidelines with the numeric data. And they're given collateral material so that they might read on their own and understand more of what these measures mean for the individual subject. We use the peak systolic velocity. In most subjects, if the PSV is more than 125, then there's at least 50% blockage in the carotid artery in the neck. And those subjects need uh, further testing in, a, in a, a platform where we do formal diagnostic studies. Blood pressure is so very important for us to check, and we do that in the recumbent position, actually in all four limbs. 50% of all the attributable stroke risk on an annual basis is from hypertension. Another way of saying that is if we controlled America's blood pressures, half of all the strokes in America are prevented by just blood pressure control. The body mass index is, is calculated by the computer system when this, the uh, subject gives their height and weight. World Health Organization standards are utilized. The uh, PSV is what I mentioned during the Doppler interrogation of the carotid arteries. This is done by the ultrasonographer. So we have a B-mode image that both has color, so we know where to locate the blood vessel as well as the black and white or grayscale image that's produced. And then the peak systolic velocity, part of the Doppler interrogation of flow in the internal carotid artery on both sides. 15% of all strokes in America are occasioned or created by atrial fibrillation. Body mass index is a World Health Organization standard. It's a measure for fitness. And it should be 17.9 or 24.9. ABI, as I mentioned, the blood pressure in your legs, is the most sensitive predictor of coronary artery disease of any test we could measure. This is a more sensitive predictor than is measuring white cell myeloperoxidase, total cholesterol, LDL, LP little a, particle size, LDL, or even uh, high sensitivity CRP. All of those surrogate markers are dead on arrival when it comes to looking at the great sensitivity of ABIs. And finally, we get to ultrasound. If we find that we have plaque, then we know that the blood vessel wall is not tolerating the patient's lipid levels. Those lipid levels are dangerous for them, and they should do something about that. Not that they can do something on their own, but they need to come into healthcare where they can really get that problem worked on before they have an index event like stroke or heart attack. And so these were the measures that we selected because they had been vetted and validated by prospective clinical trials. They're easy to measure in subjects. It doesn't take a lot of time. They have high sensitivity. And it's widely accepted that if we made a modification medically as physicians with these measures, we would do a tremendous job for the public health in America.